Good evening, everybody. Good to see us all tonight. We're going to have a good night in the house of the Lord, as always, this evening, just to have a time of prayer together. And, and we're looking forward to Billy uh, sharing the word a little bit later on as well. Well, immediately after we open up on a word of prayer. But and it was good to see us all tonight. Hope you are all keeping well. And um, don't forget, just keeping your prayers tomorrow morning, mums and tots, and um, at ten o'clock to twelve. And um, just keep that in your prayers as the parents come in with their young ones. That that Dora and Linda and anyone else that helps out there would have opportunities to witness mm -hmm. to, to the the parents that would come in. Also Friday night, don't forget Thrive Youth again. Um, you know the people that might have young adults coming in. It's incredible every Friday night and. Um, so just continue to keep that in your prayers as well. And then don't forget our services um, this Sunday as well. Pastor will be uh, bringing God's word in the morning and I'll be bringing the word in the evening. So if you fancy a night off, <laughs> <laughs> maybe in the evening. Um, but yeah, no, it's good to see us all tonight. And uh, we'll open up with a wee word of prayer and, uh, and then we'll hand straight over to Billy. Bless you. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity for us to get together, Lord. Lord, a wonderful opportunity for us to bring our requests before you, Lord, as brothers and sisters in you. Yes, but Lord, we thank you, Lord, before we even open our mouths this evening, Lord. Lord, before we even call out the, the requests tonight, Lord, you know each and every single one of them, Lord. You know each and every single circumstance and each and every single person. And Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, that tells us in your word, Lord, that you know us inside and out lord you know us all together lord lord you know the very number of hairs on our head lord and lord that just fills us with great reassurance lord mm -hmm. lord we just serve a wonderful god and we just thank you for that lord and lord we just pray lord that that anyone that would need a touch from you tonight lord anybody that's watch, watching at home or anybody that's here this evening or somebody that would love to be with us tonight lord lord but are unable to be for whatever reason lord our prayer is lord that you just place your healing hand upon them. Lord, we know that there's nothing too difficult for you, Lord. There's nothing outside of your capabilities. And Lord, we pray that they would be back amongst us again on Sunday, Lord. Lord, we just pray, Lord, for Billy as he brings your word this evening. Lord, Lord, give us listening ears and open hearts for what we're going to hear tonight. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those that be watching at home, Lord, that there be somebody watching tonight who doesn't know you as Savior, Lord. But Lord, as we pray every week, we pray, Lord, that tonight would be the night, Lord, that they we get right with you, Lord, yes. that you would prepare them for what they're going to hear tonight, Lord, Lord, that you would soften their hearts and that you would soften their attitudes and we would hear word in the coming days, Lord, that someone has got right with you, Lord, or we would be mindful to give you and you alone the glory. So, Lord, we ask all these things in your precious name, giving you thanks. Amen. 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 I want to, uh, tonight, if you've got your Bible with you, just turn with Je to Genesis with me. Genesis uh, 32, verse 23. And he took, and he took, he took them and sent them over the brook, and sent them over that he had, and Jacob had left, was left alone, and there he wrestled with a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Mm. For as a prince, I have power with God and with men, and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask my name? And he blessed him there. He just finished the meeting there. Mm. You know, again, as we look, I was looking up that, we know, all know about Jacob and the deceiver. And... Uh, or he even got there. But you know, even through all this here, you know, God had still blessed him. God had still brought him out. And God was still going to work through him. And you know, just a couple of verses, you don't have to look it up. 
This is what God has said to him back in, 20, in first, uh, chapter 28. And the seed shall be the dust of the earth, and they shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and the nice seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in the place where thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done what I, that which I have spoken of thee. And it's just that part there when you, when you read that verse 15 again, that God says, I will bring you again onto this land. Mm -hmm. And those verses that I have read out there in chapter 32, we'll find that Jacob, we all know he was a deceiver. And, um, the, and thank God that his name was changed into Israel, the Prince of God. In spite of his weakness, he was a chosen instrument of God. All his faults, all his failures, he was still a chosen God, has still chosen him. And again, we find her, he, he, what a dirty life. He had a very un unhappy household. There was the house where he, where he was there. There was almost problems in that, speaking of, to, like, a, like a lot of uh, houses now. In chapter 25 and 29, he cheats his brother Esau out of his birthright. As firstborn son, Esau should be selected. He should, excuse me a second. He should succeed. And pardon me. He cheats his brother Esau out of his birthright at firstborn. Esau should have, should have succeeded Isaac as father and as head of the family and inherited a double share of the estate, which he sells his birthright. He forfeits all title to the blessing which goes with it. In other words, you know, I have so often wondered there because Esau, he was a hunter. He was one that was always out in the fields. And yet, we all know the story here of how he came back and he was so hungry that he wanted, again, he wanted food. And how he was, how he wanted just, he, he came back and he sold his birthright. That means to say that as, as the first son, the eldest son, he would have had every he would have had the inheritance of the father. And he also would have had the blessings of the father. But because he had sold his birthright, it meant that he was cut off. You know, it shows us that Esau's attitude, he was worldly minded. He sold his birthright for a single meal. And yet Esau should have showed how little he valued his birthright. Mm -hmm. You know, here he was coming, and Pastor even spoke that on Sunday morning, he was speaking about our, our inheritance, but he was, so, he was so hungry that his birthright didn't even mean, mean, mean much to him. And he knew, he said, well, you know, because he had always been out on the fields and always on the ride, he thought, well, he knew better. It was okay. His birthright meant nothing really to him. If he was going to die, so what was, what was his birth? His birthright wouldn't have meant much to him. But again, we know that he, he had sold that. And his younger brother, again, he was a bit of a deceiver. In Hebrews 12, 16 and 17, um, lest there be any fornication or profane person as Esau, who was for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Verse 17, for you know the her afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. In other words, what happened was, after he had sold his birthright, after he had realized that Jacob had, uh, had taken his birthright, that, and we all know that even Jacob even, even deceived his own father by saying that he was Esau. But he, uh, here we find that he repented and he wanted his birthright back, but we find that there was no way back for him. There was no repentance, no place of repentance for him, although he sought it with tears. And yeah, he, he compelled, and you know, again we find here that after all that had happened, that Jacob, he was compelled to flee for his life. But then what they did was they arranged for him to go to Haran, to, to choose a wife and on his way he has that spiritual vision and vow at Bethel and we all know how God spoke to him there in Bethel I've just read it out 
and uh, how God had said to him that through his seed that the earth would be blessed, through his seed that God was going to bless. And you wonder how God was going to do that because now he was on the run from his brother. Now he wanted out of the road from his brother. And as even trouble falls him down even to there, he, he went down there to choose a wife. And, I, you know, and this, he had still family troubles. After, after serving Laban for 20 years, I, the angel of God spoke unto him in a dream, saying, Jacob, I said, and said, Here I am, I am God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee from out of this land, and re return unto the land of thy kindred. And he sent a, a kind and humble message to Esau to give him a short account of himself, that he was not a beggar, that he was, wasn't coming back to claim his inheritance. But again, we find here even through all that there, that Jacob, Jacob, again, he was on the run. And God again speaks to him and remembers and reminds him of the time that at Bethel, when, the, when God again had spoken to him, when God had promised him that he was going to let through his seed. You wonder how God was going to do it. God did do it. And, you know, there's times there that we, we come in and there's times that, you know, that we actually, when God has promised us things, there's times that we wonder, well, how is God going to do this? Mm -hmm. I thank God that God's word is sure and it's true. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God again reminds him how they came to that place and how that he saw that vision of the stairway to heaven when he saw the angels coming down, ascending and descending onto it and how God had reminded him how that he said to him that he was going to be a blessing. And now we find him that he is actually away from God, away from his people. And God again says to him, look, I'm going to bring you back. God remembered him. God said, I'm going to bring you back. And even through that, you're going to be, it pushed me in mind as old, you know, when you think back there again, that God had said to him, look, I'm going to bring you back. Hallelujah. And, you know, and again, we'll find that and you find out his brother is actually on the run, on his brother is actually on his tail, his brother is actually looking for him. And through fear that he starts to pray to God again, he receives a very formidable, formidable account of Esau's warlike preparations against him. The news that Esau is coming at speed with a force of 400 men. Out of fear, he cried unto God. And you know something? Fear does bring prayer. Yeah. Now he plans and prays alone and sleepless. In other words, what he was doing here was he was okay. He wanted to come back there. He wanted to make things right for his brother. He wanted to make right, things right for his father and also his family. But when he hears that his brother's coming there against him with a, a force of 400 men, no wonder he got panicky. No wonder he started to worry about it. No wonder he started to pray. And you know, I believe that that's the times, you know, fear does bring us to pray. There's things when it happens in our lives and the only way that we can really sort it out is in prayer. We call on to God. And so, you know, it's so sad to think too that the only time that people do pray on to God is when they're in trouble, when things start to go wrong. That's right. But I thank God that we can call on God at any time and God will bring us through. We have that account now with... They, in fear that he cries on to God. And now he plans, and he, of the verses that read out there, he gets his family together, he gets them all together, he gets his livestock, he gets everything that he has, and he puts them over the brook, over the ford, as that uh, call it in the Bible. And then he goes himself, and he's alone. And I believe it's that time when he's starting to cry on to God, when this angel of God comes down, or by the... the, the uh, and the different, some say, a man, well, the Bible there, it says a man, other, the NIV says an angel. But it, again, he's there, again, Jacob is left alone, and there he wrestled with the man with him until the breaking of the day. We have this remarkable story of the wrestling of this angel when he prevailed and told by the prophet Hosea, Yea, you have power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. 
We found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. You know, Jacob, he kept his ground, and the angel prevailed not. You know, he fought with this angel. I don't know what way this wrestling bout started. Don't know how it started, but I know how it finished. And thank God that the angel said to him, you know, the angel said to him, look, it's daybreak, you need to let me go. But he says, I will not let you go till you bless me. I know I often think too, and that's the way that we should be actually praying to God. Amen. That's for even for our land here, the way we are today. And the things that even of God, even in our own lives, we should be praying to God with that attitude. Lord, I will not let you go till you bless me. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that you've got, you want God just to bless us, to touch us so we'll feel good, and so we'll be running around with a cheshire face. No, I mean, would God would to bless you, for God to bless your family, for God to save your family, Amen. for those in your family that's not saved, for God to do that. He wanted God to bless. I will not let you go till you bless me. At times we pray to God, at times we ask God, and because God doesn't ask to, uh, just answer when we want him to answer, then, well then maybe, maybe it wasn't to be. Maybe God doesn't want the answer. We start to make excuses. But if we hold on in there, hold on in there, Jacob, he kept blessing him with that. I don't know, I'm telling you, it must have been some bout that he was doing. But I find God that wasn't in his own strength that he wrestled with that angel. I find God that his strength was coming from heaven above. It was coming from God. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And we need to have that same attitude. He kept his ground and that angel could not prevail against him. Why? Because he wanted, he was determined, he was determined. And in Romans 8 and 26, likewise the Spirit also helps us in our affirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us oh, with groaning that cannot be uttered. Oh, oh, I pray for even for this land of ours, even for around the way things are. And, you know, I believe that God has so much more for us. I believe that God really wants, and before this, before this pandemic started, I believe that God was again, he was actually starting to move here. I believe that the hand of God was starting to bless again in this church. And I believe that God will do it again. Yeah. But we have, need to have that attitude that when we pray, that when we pray, we believe what we're praying. When we believe and we're saying, Lord, we're not going to give up, we're not going to give in. We're not going to stop until you bless us, until we see our families, some of our families saved, till we see even the area around the church here, till we see folk coming in and hear them confess and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Amen. And there might be somebody even here, even, even watch it in tonight, and maybe you have run from God, maybe you're away far from God, and you think, well, there's no way back. I want to tell you tonight, there is a way back. All you've got to do is call out and he's there. Amen. Maybe you're wrestling with something. Maybe you're, you're wrestling with the doubts. Maybe you're wrestling with, maybe you feel God in some way. Let it go and come back to God. Hallelujah. Because he's still got there with arms wide open. Praise God. Yeah, and when Jacob, when he wrestled with that angel, well, his, and I would say, no pain, no gain. There was pain there. When Jacob wrestled with the angel, all night and prevailed, he emerged next morning with a changed man, a new name, and a limp. In other words, he had a different walk. Yeah. He had a different walk. Yeah. And that's what we need, I believe, even now, that we need to have a different walk. I'm not talking about the walk around a limp. No, I don't mean that. But that's the reason when he, when, he, when he was actually with that angel, that angel knew that he couldn't prevail. So he touched his thigh and he went to a limp. And when he came out of that the next morning, every time that he limped, he remembered mm. how he had wrestled with that angel. How God had said, I'm going to bring you back to the land. I'm going to bring you back to where the promise started. Maybe you've walked away from God. Maybe you're far away from God and you've walked away. But God wants to bring you back. I believe he wants to bring even the churches back. I'm yeah. talking about worldwide. I believe that they've walked away for God. They've been actually wrestling with different things, moral things. And I believe that God wants to bring them back. Even here, I believe that God again is saying, 
And it's time that we started really to believe what we're praying for. Yes, you know, we're praying for souls not to give up, but to hold on in there yes. and to believe God, and God will bring it about. You know, okay, he had to make that sacrifice. His limb was a sacrifice he had to make for enhanced blessing. I will not let thee go except you bless me. God wrestled with us to bring us to where he wants us to be. Then he can delight in us. And we all go through things. We all wrestle with different things in life. And we say we don't, I don't know. But we all, there's different things. Even sometimes even walk. Even sometimes, you know, but I thank God that when we hold it in there, that we will get the answer. Malachi 3 and 10. Bring all thy tithes into the storehouse. And there may be meat in thine house. And prove me. And therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. When we read that, it says, you know, here's God challenging. Because he said, prove me. God is actually saying, prove me. Bring it all into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me. God has sent through them. What does that mean? Does that mean bringing our tithes, our offerings? doesn't really just mean our money. It means our worship. It means our praise. Yeah. Our, it means our thanks unto God for what he does for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. And we bring that not just into the storehouse, into the church. Actually, the tithes back then were the people actually gave in to the tabernacle or the, or the temple. And it was actually to keep the upkeep of it. And it was also to pay for the priests that was there to keep them. But here, God is saying, to bring it into the storehouse. He said, and prove me. And therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amen. Here he's given a challenge and God is answering it. If you do this, then I will hear and I will bless and you think of a storehouse, what is a storehouse? I mean, there's a lot of warehouses here. What happens? There's, there's actually material brought into it. It's stored in there. And then when there's a need anywhere, then it is distributed out to that need. That's what God is saying. When we bring it in, we bring our blessing, we bring our worship into the storehouse, then God again will bless, that God again will reach out. We're praying for our loved ones who want us not saved. Again, if we are honouring God, that we are bringing things to God and worshipping God the way we should be, then God is saying, I will open the window. Oh, yeah. I will open the window. Glory. NIV says, floodgates. Mm. Well, we want to see that window open. Amen. We want to see those floodgates. And I believe, as I said earlier there, I believe in, even before this, the lockdown happened, I believe that God had started, even had that on the night, that window on the night latch. But I believe that, you know, even there, even if a window is on the night latch, you will still feel that gentle breeze coming in there. And I believe that that's what we were actually experiencing. God was starting to bless. God was starting to move. But I thank God when he says here, I will open the window. He means open it wide. Then you get the full blast coming in. And that's what we want. We want the full wind of the Holy Spirit to breathe again on the church to set the church on fire again. I believe that the church needs to waken up and the church needs again. And I believe that the church starts to need to get on its knees and start to wrestle with God. And start to ask God again, what is, what is the plan? What is it, Lord, you want us to do? We want to see souls saved, Lord. We're not going to let you go till you start to bless. We're not going to let you go, Lord. You know, just a big prayer. Lord, will you bless? Well, that's okay. Hasn't done it. That's all right. No, to hold on in there. To hold on in there and let God be God. And let God bless. You know, anything that we give to God is only a small return. For on all we owe, we owe him. When we hold back, we're giving our thanks, our praise, our worship. We're depriving ourselves of his blessing. We're depriving ourselves of the blessing. But I thank God again that God will bless and that God again will come. And even, even there, as we read, that Jacob, when God brought him back, we all know how when he brought him back, God answered his prayer. 
because when his brother came, he was able to make up for his brother. And God blessed him. He was able to get back into his homeland again. He was able to get back to his father again. God turned him right around. But look at the distance and look at the look at the, the things that he had to go through. Why? Because he disobeyed God. And he had to go through all that before God again brought him back to where he started. Remember Abram, Abram when he actually at first God says to him, I want you to get out of your out of, out of your land, leave your kindred, leave your leave everything behind, go to that land that I'll show you. And he left everything and he walked and he, and he went where God would let him. And God blessed him. And here is his offspring coming again. And that God has said to him, I will bring you back to your own land. Oh, praise his holy name. Do we want to see God open the windows of heaven? Do we want to really see the blessing of God? Do we really want to see our loved ones who are not saved, saved? Hallelujah. Or are we just quite happy just having we meetings? And just having church services? Coming in on a Sunday morning, singing a few worship songs, giving the announcements, then a word, and then back out, and just that's that's just the routine. No, we want to see God move. We want to see again the gifts of the Spirit in operation in the churches. But here's a man that had to wrestle, had to wrestle. God at first showed him that vision of the of the of the angels descending from heaven. And yet, even there, he ran his own way. He ran his course, but that's not thank God that God brought him back. Why? Because God had promised that through him, people were going to be blessed. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. And I believe even this church, why has it stood for nearly 100 years? I believe that God's not finished with it yet. And it would have been closed long ago. It probably would have been, I don't know, could have been anything. But no, God's kept it open for a reason. Yeah. We are the ones who put time limits on God. That's right. We are the ones who put limits on God. I thank God that God, you know, time means nothing to God. Amen. God will do it in His time mm-hmm. when it brings honor and glory onto Him. Mm-hmm. But what are you wrestling with tonight? What are you wrestling with? Give it to God. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Let God be God in your life. Praise his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He is worthy. In Proverbs 3 and 9, honor the Lord with thy substance, with thy first fruits of thine increase. When God blesses you, it's time we start to give thanks back to God again. And for God to open those windows, open them floodgates, whatever way you want to put it. But I believe that God again is going to move in this land of ours. Amen. He is going to again to move in this church. But well, we've got to believe it. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know, you've got to believe it to receive it. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Praise his holy name. Mm-hmm. So when we come into church, don't let us just have a, just church services. Don't let us just have a Tuesday night have we meetings. But let us have an encounter with God. Right. Let's have an encounter with God. God can deal. When he had that limp, it was a different walk. He came out different. He came out different. Even his name changed to Israel, Prince of God. God can turn things around. Yes. Hallelujah. But we have to do our part too, to be faithful to God, to come and forgive thanks to God for when he does bless us. Yes. But sometimes, you know, when, when, we get, when God does bless and we ask God for things, it was just even coming down the road there, I was looking at that, that pub at the corner there. There was many a time here that they were crying to God to close that. It closed. Sure. That's right. Well, not, well, that was it. Just, that was pubs closed, that's it. But before that, I was crying unto God. There was no thanks given up to God for it. Mm-hmm. But that's what we need to do. We need to bring our first, first, our first fruits unto the Lord to give Him thanks. Mm-hmm. Even for our own lives. There is things going on in our lives. I know that we struggle. But I thank God that God will bring us through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He will bring us through. Praise and God again, in spite of what we, what we want, what we think, God again will move. Hallelujah. But praise God tonight. When we come to that time of prayer, let us just, just let us cry on to God tonight. Let us bring our request before the Lord. 
and believe that God will answer. Hallelujah. And as I said before, we all struggle with different things. But thank God he has got the answer. He is still in control. Praise us, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah.